Hey, what's up guys? Jaco Khalili, Director of Training for Sheep Dog Response. Today we're here to talk about red dots and which one we're gonna use or what, what do we need to what do we need to do in order to uh, get a effective sight picture side alignment with the with the red dots. Welcome back to Sheep Dog Response. I'm Jaco Khalili, the director of training for Sheep Dog Response, and we're gonna be talking about red dot selection, right? What am I gonna put on top of my gun? Obviously, uh, most guns are going to come with uh, standard iron sights, uh, and those iron sights are going to uh, be variable depending on whether they're three dots or there's a U or whatever it is. Um, all of the brands um, may have different options, and just like anything else, you're going to have to train with that weapon to decide what you want to do. But once you get your fundamentals in order, right, once I understand the importance of sight picture and sight alignment, then it's going to be time for me to put a red dot on my weapon. Now, what is a red dot going to do? All right, depending on, on your uh, expertise and your training level, a red dot will allow you to tr transition from one target to the other faster, right? So as if I'm shooting from one target to the other, I, I've identified one target and I've shot it and I need to move and get a, a faster sight picture and, and take an acceptable shot. That's where a red dot is gonna be successful. As opposed to using iron sights, which initially will give you a faster sight picture. So my first shot will be faster when I'm using my uh, iron sights, but every shot after that will take a little bit longer than if I had a red dot. Um, if you ask Matt Smith, you know, like people these days, if you're going to be a modern day shooter, you got to get you a red dot of some sort, put it on your on your weapon. Um, that way we can actually do everything faster. Really what we're talking about is being able to complete my OODA loop. And if I have more than one target that I need to take down, the red dot is what's going to um, make me successful faster than the guy who's trying to shoot me. So let's jump into it. All right, the first thing that we're going to talk about is cost. Like for me, whenever I look at something, like if I look at something I'm going to invest my money in, the first thing I'm going to do is see how much it's going to cost. Obviously, the, the higher end products are going to have better durability, better clarity. I'm going to have more options as far as um, brightness uh, settings, uh, ease of zeroing, all of those things. So you have to decide what your price range is going to look like first. Um, that's, going to, that's going to give you your various options depending on how much you want to spend. Um, some guns might only re might only be able to mount certain weapons. Everything outside of that, let's say if I uh, I want to get a uh, Delta Point Pro mounted on my weapon, and the gun that I bought doesn't have um, the sights pre-drilled into it, or the the holes pre-drilled into the frame, then that's something I'm gonna have to add to the cost later. Um, so, depending on on mounting procedures, that's gonna be have to be added to the cost as well. Um, also, there I have to understand what the warranty is, right? So some some uh, some companies might have better warranties than other obviously depending on what your line of work is if you're going to be using this gun a lot if you're going to be using it on the move if you plan on like i mean obviously police officers are going to have more durability issues than their than your average shooter so these things are also, are going to have to go hand in hand and you're going to, have to decide for yourself where the happy medium is between cost and value right how much is how much how much am i going to pay for this uh site and what am I going to get out of it? So that's the first thing I would say talk, uh, you need to look at first is how much it's going to cost and if that will fall into your budget. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to talk about is MOA or minute of angle. Basically, what a minute of angle is when we talk about a red dot is how much space that red dot is going to take inside of the reticle, right? So if I'm looking down and it's a big, bright circle, that might be like a big MOA, maybe like a four to six MOA, um, as opposed to a tiny, tiny dot, which might be anywhere between one and three MOA different uh there might be like a, a obviously a bit of bigger reticle is going to be um is going to be handy when i'm up close to something but if i want to shoot something at distance i want to make sure that that dot is as small as possible because i want to be as accurate as i can there's a thing that we say in shooting that's it's called um aim small miss small so the smaller my uh reticle is or smaller my moa is excuse me um the less of a chance i am going to uh miss my target right now Sometimes I might have to have a bigger MOA depending on the lighting. So if I'm shooting outside uh, during the day at the range, that re that MOA is going to have to be all the way big and all the way bright so that I can be able to see it. If I use that same reticle when it's at night or it's a low light situation, basically that MOA is going to is going to wash me out. And the only thing I'm going to be able to see is that is that MOA. So one thing as far as MOA is yes the size, but a lot of these uh, higher end um, red dots have these adjustable sights on the side or these uh, adjustability of the brightness and even size of the reticle or size of the MOA. Um, 
if I'm gonna be shooting indoors and outdoors, or I'm gonna be shooting under low light or during the day, having something that's adjustable in brightness and having something that's adjustable in MOA size is gonna be really good. Um, if I'm talking about shooting with speed, if I wanna shoot faster, um, obviously the bigger MOA is gonna be what I'm looking for, but also they have uh, different um, MOAs like a crosshair or a dot with a circle or a crosshair with a circle. And what this will do is if I pull it into my, uh, my line of sight, I'll see the edges of the circle and this will allow me to adjust exactly where the center of my MOA is, right? So if I'm looking at the top portion of the circle, whenever I bring my, my gun into my sight alignment, I'll know that I'll have to raise the barrel a little bit in order to get to the middle, middle of the, uh, the MOA. So that, that's one of the things you have to think about. Um, again, the, obviously if it, if it looks cool, that's always rule number one, right? But it always comes, comes down to function and the situation is gonna determine which uh, red dot is gonna be the best option for me. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is battery life. Um, a lot of these take watch batteries or even small batteries. Um, I wanna make sure that I put something in there that's at least 50,000, 50,000 hours, because I don't, you know, sometimes it's very easy to forget to turn these things off. Um, and not all of them have an auto off feature, which is another thing I need to look at. If I'm somebody that tends to put my, my gun away and not turn the uh, reticle off, then I wanna make sure I have something that turns off by itself. There's also options where when I pick my, my weapon up, it's what's called a shake awake, where as soon as the gun starts moving, the, the, uh, the sight turns on by itself. Um, these are all, I say battery life, but these are all kind of inclusive, right? The other thing when we talk about battery is battery replacement. If you see something like this uh, Trigicon RMR, the battery, uh, the battery uh, compartments on the bottom, which means that every time I want to change the battery, I have to remove this from my weapon, um, which is which is fine. But obviously, every time I, I remove or unscrew this thing, I'm going to have to re-zero it. Um, if you're deployed, if you use your weapon a lot and you're not able to get to the range as much, that might be something that uh, that might be a, become a difficulty. Or you get something like the Delta Point Pro, or all these other ones, this Sig and this this Hollow Sun version. They all have openings on the side. You can see that this uh, this SIG one has a big battery cap on the side. And then the Delta Point Pro's one is actually on top. So battery life, uh, ease of battery change, auto off feature, uh, shake awake uh, feature. These are all things that I wanna consider when it comes to picking my red dot. Hey, and one last thing I forgot to mention. Sometimes a red dot will have a little solar panel on top and basically that will save the battery as well. So if that is, sounds like a cool option for you, make sure you look for one of those. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is mounting options, right? So what does that mean, right? A lot of these sites are made for specific weapons. So that means that the weapons that these are, are built to go on already have the uh, back of the slide milled out and the base plates for that. Basically, a base plate is something that's going to mount to the bottom of this site and then that's going to fit onto the base plate of your, or onto the slide of your weapon. Um, for those that don't, you're going to have to find a base plate that fits. Um, and you're gonna see that whenever you try to affix a base plate to the top of a slide, it's gonna have, to, it's gonna have the, the holes are gonna be drilled in a way that it's gonna fit tight. The last thing you want is any loose or extra pieces that whenever you mount this site, that it starts shaking or it's sliding left or right because you're never gonna be able to zero this thing, okay? Um, another option is if your weapon isn't already pre-drilled or, or tapped for sites, you can always take it into a, a shop or a gunsmith and they're gonna be able to do it for you. If you don't have any experience of mounting these types of weapons or mounting these types of sights onto a weapon, I would suggest taking it to a gunsmith just to make sure it's done the correct way. If not, I'm sure there's a hundred of YouTube videos um, or use the internet and Google is a good source to try to find directions on how to make this stuff work. But then again, if you don't have any experience, it's gonna be a little iffy, right? You can see that almost all of these, so almost all of these have these holes drilled on the bottom. All right, and that's how you're gonna secure it to the base plate. So basically it's gonna be the slide, the proper base plate for the slide, for that weapon, for this sight, that's gonna get mounted by its own screws. And then you're gonna find two more screws that's gonna secure the sight to the, uh, to the weapon. Again, when it comes to mounting options, you have to see if I have to, again, dismount my, my sight in order to change the battery. Some of them like the Delta Point uh, Mini, you can have to take the sight completely off the back of it in order to change the battery. These are all things that you have to put in consideration, okay? Is it pre-drilled? Does it have the right uh, base plate? Do I know what I'm doing? Uh, make sure that you put all those into consideration when you pick your red dot. All right, guys, the next thing we're gonna talk about is, is it a closed or enclosed lens, right? So what does that mean? 
So if you look at this uh, SIG, you'll notice that it's a box and there's glass on both sides, right? On, so on both sides of this glass. That means that this red dot is enclosed, right? So that means it doesn't matter what I do to the glass. doesn't matter if I put water on this thing. It doesn't matter if it's cracked or anything like that. Um, I'm still gonna be able to see the red dot whenever I bring this into my line of sight. Or if we go over to the Delta Point Pro, you'll see that there's only one piece of glass and this is an open sight. That means that if I have this weapon on my belt and it starts to rain and water gets in on top of the lens like this, I'm gonna basically see a big, big blur. Basically, if I had an astigmatism, that's what it would look like when I look through my sight. So uh, it's, it's no problem to have something like this, like an, an open uh, sight, if I have the frame of mind to either keep my hand over my weapon or if I have a level two or three retention on my holster where it, it covers the side by itself, right? A level, do you see a lot of cops have this, uh, a level two or three um, holster on their on their weapon and that's specifically to protect the protect this, the lens so that it doesn't get wet, it doesn't get damaged while they're handling um, a perp, so to speak. Um, or if I, you know, obviously a good option is to have one that's enclosed on there. You know, I don't even have to worry about that. Either way, um, they're very similar. Um, if you're gonna be, it just depends on your situation, right? Am I in the, am I gonna be in a place that's gonna be raining or the, the, obviously the weather's gonna play a huge uh, part on what type of uh, red dot or even what type of weapon systems I'm shooting. Um, you're gonna have to decide what your preference is and what your mission is. And again, situation is gonna, de is gonna deem whether I need to get a closed or, uh, or open sight. All right, so that's it guys for our, our red dot video. Obviously, we have a lot of things that we need to put in consideration, whether it's the price, mounting options, uh, what type of reticle, how much MOA I'm willing to deal with. These are all things that I need to put in consideration, right? Just like a gun that I pick, a red dot is kind of the same way. I'm gonna have to put it in my hand. I'm gonna see if it fits on my weapon. I'm gonna have to shoot with it. I'm gonna have to be familiar with it. Or once I do get this, let's say I buy this uh, Delta Point Pro and I never, I've never trained with it before. Now that it's on my weapon, it's my responsibility to zero it, to understand how it operates. And then most important guys is to practice and train, right? Um, make sure you hit us up at sheep.response.com. We have um, a ton of information on there. Hit up our YouTube channels, hit up our Instagram. A lot of new information coming out there every day, man. Make sure you guys are getting your training in. Training is the most important thing you can do. That's what's gonna prepare you to save a human life. Um, and you gotta save yourself. Until then, we'll see you guys at sheep.response.com.